Good morning. Welcome to Light Embassy, taking his glory to the ends of the world. This morning's message is captioned, Worship in Spirit. And the introductory scripture is taken from Romans chapter 1 verse 9. I'm reading from the KJV. Grace. Paul says, For God is my witness, whom I serve of my spirit, in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. So Paul says, Whom I serve of my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. So God, Paul served in his spirit. He worshipped God in his spirit. He let you know that now he's trying to communicate to you that when it comes to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, about worship in the spirit, about serving God in the spirit. As long as your Christian world becomes a walk about by the soul or by the flesh, you miss God. You miss God. And many Christians have missed God because of that. Primarily, it's about the spirit. That is the foundation. That is the fundamental. Jesus said, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit. So Paul was alluding to the same thing the Master himself said. And in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. John chapter 4 verse 23. We learned yesterday that worship is deeper than singing. It's everything that has to do with your Christian living. The Apostle Paul understood this all-important truth, the truth about what the gospel demands. The gospel is premised on worship in the spirit. What does that mean? Contrary to what has been taught in many Christian circles, the problem in the church is that there are many Christians who are not living the true Christian life. It's sad, but it's true. There are Christians, they go to church, but they are not living the true Christian life. They are living another life. Most are living the life of the Old Testament. They have not understood what Christianity is, uh, is about. And if you don't get the accurate understanding of what Christianity is, you will not live that life. And the life can become a frustration. You can be defeated in life. And it's not the fault of God at all. It's because you have not understood Christianity. Contrary to what has been taught in many Christian circles, true Christianity is centered on the indwelling of Christ in the believer through the Holy Spirit, what Paul terms as the Spirit of Christ. Indwelling presence of Christ, that's what it's about. It's about. And it's important, Christians, we understand this. What Paul terms as the Spirit of Christ, that's what Paul calls it, the Spirit of Christ. He says in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. So he says that if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, if the Spirit of God lives in you, then you are in the Spirit and not in the flesh. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Now, this is, these are the very words of the Holy Spirit through Paul. He says, if anyone, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, they do not belong to Christ. Meaning that any person who doesn't have the Spirit of God dwelling in him is not a Christian. It's not a Christian. Christianity, who is a Christian? Christianity is not about the person going to church. It's, it's not just, somebody is not just a Christian because he goes to church. If you're a Christian, you have to go to church. But that's not what <laughs> you, are, is, you are measured by. That's not a measuring rod. No, 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 no. That's not a measuring rod. Here he tells you what characterized people as Christians. What you have to meet, the standard you have to meet, Right? The standard you have to meet. For instance, if you go to uh, a hos hospital and you see uh, people there, it doesn't mean that everyone you see there is a doctor. You don't say that because 
I, I found a person in the hospital, then he's a doctor. You know that if someone is a doctor, there are certain standards he has to meet. There's some that characterize a person as a doctor. It doesn't also mean every, everyone you find in the hospital is a nurse. Something should characterize that uh, a person to be a nurse. In the same vein, in the same vein, the fact that someone is found in church does not mean he's a Christian. Right? Does not mean he's a Christian. The same way that if you're a doctor, you have to practice in the hospital or in the clinic. But not all people found in the hospital or in the clinic are doctors. So the same way if you're a Christian, you have to go to church. But doesn't mean everyone found in the church is a Christian. What qualifies someone to be a Christian? This is why sometimes when you say it, some people become offended. But you read the Bible for yourself and don't assume what people say. He says that if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Meaning that if you do not have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, you are not a Christian. So to be a Christian means that you have received the Holy Spirit to be in you. That is what the Bible is saying. Any person who does not have the Spirit of God, like I said, dwelling in him is not a Christian. This is the great mystery Paul talked about. And that's why Christianity is referred to as the great mystery. And says that Christianity is that great mystery. And that mystery, Paul says, is Christ in you. That's what Christianity is about, Christ in you. So for you to be a Christian means that Christ is resident in you. Christian does not just mean followers of Christ. It's more than that. It's just when the many Christians say Christians to the world, when you say Christians, they, they will say that they are followers of Christ. That's to the world. But in the church, that's not the true meaning of Christianity. Yes, Christians follow Christ, but it's, they are more than followers of Christ. For Christians, it means that Christ himself is resident in you through the Holy Ghost. So that's why the mystery, that great mystery of Christianity is Christ in you. So many people have been quoting over the ages, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, that's Christianity, Christ in you. Christ in you. That is Christ resident in the believer. That is Christianity. So when you read Colossians chapter 1 verse 27, Paul says, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So Christianity is Christ in you, not Christ in heaven. It's Jesus Christ in heaven, emphatically yes. But now he's resident in every Christian through the Holy Ghost. Through the, that's why he said, I will come to you. I will not leave you orphanless. I will not leave you as orphans, parentless. I will come to you. So Christianity is Christ resident in you. That's the hallmark of Christianity. That's all what it's about. The Spirit of Christ has become inseparably one with your spirit. So the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Now your spirit and his spirit has merged to become inseparable, one spirit. That is Christianity. So what really is the meaning of worshipping God in spirit? It means that everything about your life and Christian work should stem from the spirit of Christ within you, living within you. This spirit resident in you is your only tangible access to the Father. It's very important. What I've said is very important. This is what many Christians have not been taught. In Christianity, you are not. You don't have. You don't have access to God just because you are crying or you are you are looking into the skies. You know, some people when they are praying in churches and they look into the skies to them because they are looking to the sky. It means that God is dropping something. These are things of the senses. That is not how you contact God. Is God in heaven? Yes. Is it, is it wrong to look into the heavens and pray? As, as, absolutely not. Jesus Christ looked into the heavens and prayed. He looked into the heavens many times in the gospel. So that was not the, that was not the issue here. But Jesus was not looking into the heaven with the, with the mindset that, oh, something is going to drop from heaven to him. No. When he talked about himself, the works, he says, The Father in me, he doeth the works. Even though he was looking into the heaven and praying, he said that, the work was done through the Holy Ghost, the Father living in him, resident in him. 
Now this now you are a Christian, your access to God, your tangible access to God is the spirit within you. Do you know the gap between where you are and the where God is in the third heavens? So if even God was to drop something, well, through which channel will it come through then? No, your access, your access to the Father in heaven is through his spirit within you. That's what God wants us to understand. That's what many people have missed. So as long as you are not conscious of the Holy Ghost within you, the Spirit of Christ within you, as long as you are not conscious of Christ in you, you will not you will miss many things. You miss many of your blessings. And that's why there are Christians who will pray faith. For instance, a Christian is sick. He's operating his faith. He believes that God can heal him. But still, he dies sick. Does it mean that the word of God doesn't work? No. It's because of the faith they have been taught. is still the faith under the Old Testament. So the person is praying. For instance, now that there's COVID-19 virus. Many Christians are praying God. Maybe he has contracted. He's praying for God to heal him or her. But in his mind, God is going to do something from heaven. That's not how God will preach now in the gospel. If he's going to heal you, he's going to heal you through the Holy Ghost already within you. That's why Paul says that if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in me, that same spirit shall give life to my mortal body. He shall give life to my mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in me. So it's, it's all by his spirit already resident in you. So even though you, you two Christians are all talking about divine healing, the one talking about divine healing as a result of the spirit within him, and the one talking about divine healing as a as, as a general term that God is going to do something from heaven. They are not all both operating the same kind of faith. And they are not all, both of them, at the same level of understanding and insight and operation in the verities of the spirit. Right? It, it, they are not all operating. You may you may see it. You from the you from your standpoint, you may think that oh, they all have faith in God. They are all pray have faith for this miracle. But that's not how God sees it. That's not how it is in the spirit. Because one is still operating like the old covenant saint, but the other has, who who have now understood that no, now he has come home. He's within me becomes a different ball game to together it becomes a different ball game so we have to understand what christianity really is it's about the holy spirit within you that's what christianity is about this is the meaning of what paul reported when he said in galatians chapter 2 verse 20 that I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which, you see what he says, beloved, he says, but Christ liveth in me. The man was conscious, he knew what the gospel meant. The gospel meant Christ liveth in him. His mind was on, on, the, on Christ living in him. The same thing John said, that greater is he that is in you. So these apostles, they understood what Christianity really means. That Christianity is about the one in us. The one in us. So Paul says that Christ liveth in me. That is Christianity. It's not God is going to send something from heaven. It's the Christ living in you. So Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Now that you have become a Christian, your confidence should be in that spirit resident in you and not in any other thing. Not your talents, education, title, looks, money, etc. Before God, all these things are worthless. All these things are worthless. So Paul understood these things. So when you read Philippians chapter 3 verse 3, it says that, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So now he helps 
you to understand why his confidence was his confidence was not in the flesh his confidence was in the spirit within him this is the Paul that said in the scripture that i just read says that christ liveth in me so his confidence was in the christ living in him and not in the flesh so in that in that in this same passage of scripture philippians chapter 3 he let you know that even though he was of the tribe of benjamin he was a pharisee he was learned See that he called he, he was he was concerned the, the righteousness of the Lord blameless. He says that he counted all those things as dunk. That's what the man said. He says he counted all those things as dunk. That he might win Christ. He gives you the condition for Christ to work on your behalf. You have to count all those things as dunk. As long as your confidence is in your education, in your in money, in positions, in your looks, in all things of the of the senses in your father in your mother you won't have christ working on your behalf that's that that is what does it mean that god is saying that don't be educated or education is not important or talents and money are not important that's not what he's saying money is important talents are important that's why he blesses people with money he, he gives talents he paved way for people to even to be educated. But what is trying to tell you that that's not where your confidence should be in. Those things are given you to enjoy. You use those things as tools. But that's not where your confidence should be. You don't you don't say that, oh, because I'm educated, it means that I am better than this person. Or because I have this, it means that I am better. No, 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 no. Those things are worthless. So your confidence should be in Christ, your confidence should be in Christ, the Christ within you. That's all what matters. That's all what matters. All those other things are vain. So God is not saying that education, talents, and money are not important, but that your trust and confidence shouldn't be in those things, but in Christ, in you, not in daddy or mommy. Child of God, understand this. It doesn't matter what you do or say. If your Christian living doesn't stem from the Christ resident in you, God is not pleased. This is why life has become a frustration to many, to many Christians, because they are not taught right. So when it comes to Christianity, God says worship him in the spirit, because God is only pleased in Christ. Is not pleased in any if 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 you could if we could give something to God to have pleased God, Jesus wouldn't have come. Right? Because before Jesus Christ came, just the, the Jews were in, in, in religion. So if they could present something to God, which God was pleased in, Jesus shouldn't have come. So nothing that you do outside Christ pleases God. So, as long as you present something to God, which didn't stem from, doesn't stem from the Christ living within you, God is not pleased. It's all about the Christ living within you. That's why Paul says, it's no longer I living, but Christ is the one now living in me. It's not about you anymore. It's about the Christ living in and through you. That is what Christianity is about. That's what true worship is about. So when it comes to your healing, when it comes to your health, when it comes to your righteous living, when it comes to holiness, when it comes to everything, like Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. So everything, you look towards the Christ living within you. When it comes to you worshiping, everything, your ability, you look towards the Christ within you. That is what pleases God. That is the true worship. That's what he meant by saying, the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit. In spirit. That's you worshiping him in spirit. It means that now Paul says, I serve him by my spirit. That spirit. That is what Christianity is about. Any other thing is not Christianity. God bless you.